Hoody ho. Hello, everybody. Welcome to episode 50. We have hit the big 5 Um, Yeah, I, I, I love our next character. I, I love them all. I don't, like, it's, it's just, there's some I may like more than others. I don't know. Like, it's one of those things where people will ask, like, an artist, uh, like a musician saying like, hey, you know, what's your favorite album or whatever? And it's like, no, I don't know, man. They're kind of like all my children. Like they're all my friends and, or, you know, I love them all equally. Um, and I really feel that way. Like I will say I love the guest episodes more than my own just because I'm uh, insecure and I don't always love me. <laughs> so there's that. But no, I mean, I do like the episodes of none. The one about Lori and the, the race one and stuff. Like, I mean, like I like them, but I, I love listening to these people and, and getting to know them and just hearing their stories because it's super impactful and it inspires me and keeps me on my toes and just keeps me smiling and, and so on. So, um, yeah, our next guest is just fantastic and I hope you enjoy her as much as I did. So welcome her. All right, guys. So we're here with another guest. Um, so I've been... You know, everyone knows I go out and reach and try to find all these guests. And I um, sometimes I just kind of run out of ideas because, I, you know, I've said that there's certain conditions I've wanted to cover. And MS is one that's important to me because of my grandfather. Uh, he succumbed to it and, and it basically took his life. Um, and I continue to just reach out. And actually, I believe what I did was I Google search like the best um, Instagram followers as far as when it comes to who have MS and, and are good advocates for MS. And I believe she was the first person that came up. And uh, and I had to reach out to her, and then I read a little about her, and then I was just kind of hooked, and so uh, here we are. So you want to um, say your name and obviously, uh, you know, like where you're from type ordeal. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Lindsay Holcomb, and I'm from Portland, Oregon. Um and I'm, it's a pleasure to connect with you, and I absolutely love your mission and what you're doing. Yeah, thank you. Of course, like I said, I I can't, as I've said to multiple people, like when I do this, <laughs> I'm do, I need like I need you, just like you need me <laughs> if, if we're going to like go further in this world and we're going to make a difference for people with disabilities because it's like no matter how big I get, if I ever become something or whatever. Mm-hmm. I can't do it without all of the people. And I think a lot of people, when they become famous or, or get some sort of success in any way as a person with a disability, they kind of close the gap behind them and go, see, look how great mm-hmm. I am. Now I'm an individual and forget all the shit that I've been through. Yes, there's other people out mm-hmm. there that do amazing things, but I'm I'm me. And they forget about yeah. all the people that they passed on the way to, uh, up. Um, and I can't do that. Well, like, I want to bring everyone with me. Yeah, that's a great, I mean, it's a great mindset. I'm a huge advocate of the when, not if. Right. Um, and a huge um, thing that I hold dear, you know, in both my art practice that I'll talk about in a little bit here is that, you know, you can be anything in a year. You can, you know, state what you want to be and you'll do it. You know, I, I think I don't like to limit things at all. And actually that, that kind of, um, idea is a huge reason why I do what I do now. Um, so I suppose if you want, I'll give a little background. Sure, please do. Oh, and, and, sure. Right. And you have the condition MS, right? Which is, you want to yes. tell people what it stands for? I know, but. Yeah. You know. So <laughs> I have um, relapsing remitting MS. Um, there's several different types of multiple sclerosis. And mine is one that I, the most simplistic way to describe it is that I have um, certain symptoms that come and go. Um, a lot of people understand it as, you know, having a flare or being in remission. Um, and so, you know, I have several symptoms that pop up um, in times of stress or fatigue or illness. And, you know, they'll eventually um, fade as I manage them. However, I'm fairly fresh in my own diagnosis. I was diagnosed at the end of 2017. Um, and I am one of the people you hear about this often when you start learning about multiple sclerosis is it took over a decade to get my diagnosis. Um, because it is a really strange disease that shows up um, regardless of what label you're given in the end, it shows up differently in each person that has it. 
Um, there's not one image of multiple sclerosis that fits the entire disease, um, which is a very difficult thing to understand when I was newly diagnosed. It doesn't look, um, it just, it's just you can't pick someone off the street and say this is what they have. Um, and I think there are preconceived notions of that. Um, and so it, it was not something that I knew anything about when I received my diagnosis. Again, um, taking about 10 years into that, I feel like I had heard every other thing under the sun to describe kind of the symptoms I was having. Um, and as I look back at it, personally, I think, you know, part of the reason that my diagnosis took over 10 years is that I had so many different kinds of life changes over that decade since, you know, feeling some symptoms in high school, um, the fatigue of, of going off to college. I had, um, I, I moved to Japan at one point that was really difficult with a diet switch and all of that for me. Um, and vice versa, when I returned to the state, I had two children fairly back to back. Um, so there was always kind of something new going on, something fading away, something getting worse and going away. It was very hard to follow. Um, and something that is brought up quite often is that women who have multiple sclerosis often go into remission when they're pregnant. Um, and, um, and post pregnancy for a while. And like I said, mine were back to back. So there's, you know, that's a good three, three years in that small, small child <laughs> realm where my symptoms kind of faded a bit and then came back with a, with a fury. <laughs> so. Right. Did you have any, um, misdiagnosis, like where they thought maybe it was something else? Cause you, you said you had symptoms, but you didn't have a diagnosis two years later. Yeah. A lot of it was, um, kind of dietary things. I had heard celiac. I, a lot of it was, um, I think for a long time that I went back and forth with, with my doctor was depression and anxiety because, um, you know, it's fairly well known that if you have depression, it can manifest itself into physical symptoms as well. Um, and that certainly is something that I've always had to manage and battle and, and um, learn how to live with more. And so, I think once I had that in my chart, it was always kind of a, mm, it's probably this, let's adjust that, um, your medication, et cetera. So in addition to multiple sclerosis, I also have Hashimoto's. Um, I also have Ehlers-Danlos. And so I'm kind of a collecting them like Pokemon, I suppose. But <laughs> all of these answers, it kind of happened all within the space of a year. And I you know, to be perfectly honest, have not dealt with all of them because it's been too much information too quickly. Right. Um, kind of get, well, in the beginning stages, you're kind of like a lot of people sometimes, or, you know, a lot of people, their families or their loved ones or whatever seem to take it worse in the beginning because um, we're so in shock and, and we don't really know how to deal with it yet until like whenever something severe happens or whatever. Um, absolutely. What, what, what are those two other conditions? I've actually never heard of those two. The Hakimoto. Hakimoto's is a thyroid condition. Okay. Um, and so it has a lot of symptoms that also fall under the umbrella of multiple sclerosis. Ehlers-Danlos is a, um, a connective tissue disorder. And so in me, that's created a lot of joint weakness, flexibility, but um, we can do all sorts of fun, flexible tricks, but it also comes with a, a spare truckload of pain. Um, you know, my fingers can dislocate while I'm holding the steering wheel, my shoulder can pop out, my hips pop out. I mean, it's just kind of a mess. And it was always something that I'm like, you know, I don't know why I, why my body in particular is all snap, crackle, pop since I was little, <laughs> but, right, yeah. but there it is. Um, and you know, that is probably also a very simplistic way of describing it. Cause like I said, I'm still kind of in self-preservation mode. With a lot of those, um, I haven't shared before very often. I mean, maybe one post a couple of years ago, but I was also diagnosed with uh, Lyme. 
And I had no idea how politicized that was. And I just dipped my toe into trying to figure out what I should do with that information and was just um, kind of re-traumatized because I think a lot of us that live with chronic illness understand that there comes a lot of trauma with being um, with navigating the medical system and having such an extended diagnosis that I've lived with for, you know, the better half of my life. Um, each, each kind of new development is traumatizing each time because I feel like I'm starting back at zero and mm. having to build that self advocacy back up. And so if that gives a small picture of, you know, I, I have done a, a bit with managing my and understanding my multiple sclerosis, but there is this handful of other things that I'm not sure how to connect the dots between. Yet. Right. So, but no, it, it's, it, um, it's kind of refreshing too, in a way, because you're, you, you're smiling and you're laughing about it. And I know, I'm sure you have your pain and you have you cried about it and mm-hmm. so on. But the fact that you can say collecting them like Pokemon, like that's kind of dark, which I, I love because I'm, I'm a very dark sense of humor <laughs> person. But it's like a lot of people that's like, I mean, you know, I, I feel for you because you go through a lot of pain and it's sad. But when you said that, like, it's like, yeah. I get that. A lot of people would just be like, oh, how terrible. But it's like, that's kind of how you get through it in a way, even though you will never yeah. officially get through it. But you know what I mean? Like, it, it's yeah. that's how you deal with it mentally, because otherwise it's going to break you. Um, mm-hmm. And so the fact that you can say something on that level it's kind of funny because i you know it really is i don't want to catch them all but i feel like i'm right. really pretty well my, mine was um i was joking with my friend noah i said that uh i should be an organ donor and i said i'm a dick so if i'm an organ donor i'm gonna donate just my eyes and um <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like it's so sad and so dark but it's like you know, like, look, we mean nothing by it, but we just, we got to try to have some fun through it somehow. No, that's exactly how I handle it. I mean, I, it's self-preservation mode and humor has had to be a huge part of that. Um, Absolutely. Something I joke about with my family a lot, because, you know, as you imagine being a family member with all these different pieces of news constantly coming in, it's it's overwhelming. It's overwhelming for the person living with it. And it's certainly overwhelming for the people around it that are trying to understand what that means too um i am actually a twin i am a fraternal twin i have a sister and you know she has none of these (laughs) she has none of these things and so i you know ever since these things started rolling in i've always joked that i'm like i don't know what happened you know when we were being pieced together but i got the like bargain then basement deal of parts or something like <laughs> they put you together and then I just got my like, crammed together really quickly so wow. you know we work through it <laughs> but, uh, anyway oh, it really does it does lend yourself to a sense of humor though <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you have to. Like I said, I there, I mean, like, mm-hmm. you know, a lot of I mean, I've shared a lot of my mental health, my pain, and all that, and I give mm-hmm. you know a realistic depiction of what I go through depending on the day. Not every day I come on here and I'm I'm the happiest or the days I do it, but it's like I, yeah. I, I let people know that. Like I you know I did an episode where I talk about wanting to kill myself and stuff at not th- during that episode, mm-hmm. but you know a, a time where I wanted to end it. But then I, you know, I talk about mm-hmm. at the end. It's like, yeah, I'm in a much better place, but by no means am I out of the woods. Like I'm, I'm still fighting it. But how I deal with it yep. is, you know, and I, you know, whatever. I'll talk exercise or, or whatever it is I do. Um, and then you know, one of it is just making fun of what I go through and, and just laugh it off. And mm-hmm. you know, um, because as I've said multiple times on here, when I talk about people with their conditions, a lot of times I'll ask them like, hey, do you ever forget that you have a disability? Or because there's a lot of times I'll forget because. I'm just being silly and I'm just like, I'm going to go do something that's clearly far away and I'm going to sit back here and do it, like watch a movie or something. And then I have to go, Oh, you mm-hmm. dumbass, you can't see properly. Get closer. <laughs> and it's just, it's just how I get through it. And it, and it humbles you. Yeah. Like it really does. And it makes yeah. me appreciate my journey and everything I've gone through. So I'm, I'm sure it's the same yeah. with you. Absolutely. Um, and so kind of where I've reached, you know, where I'm at right now. So I'm an, I'm an artist and um, I keep saying, I'll talk about it a little bit more, but I do an art project that's focused around, focused around multiple sclerosis. But the reason I do that, the reason that I'm an artist and that I can say that I'm an artist is that following this diagnosis, um, 
I worked for 15 years in the consulting realm um, and in the corporate corporate America um, as an assistant. And, you know, I look back at the time of my life, I'm 38 and, you know, 15 years was a good chunk of your life by okay. then. And all of those environments were intensely stressful, intensely toxic. You know, as an assistant, your needs are last. You're charged with making sure everyone else's lives are smooth and easy and happy and um, supplemented with whatever they need. And it was very, you know, like the 24 hours, you know, 60 plus hours a week type lifestyle that was, you know, something that made me deeply unhappy. Um, and I was, you know, just steeped in the stress soup <laughs> for 15 years, which I do personally, um, credit with, you know, possibly leading to some illness, um, on my end, um, just staying in this environment that was really unhealthy. But when I received my diagnosis, it really made me just sit back on my heels and just say, what? am I giving my energy to? Um, right. Real quick. Real quick I don't sorry. Want... Don't mean to cut you off. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to clear this up because it'd be a question I probably will forget. Um, when you say you're an artist, do you, do you draw, do you do music? Cause it seems like anybody now with a keyboard just says they're an artist. So sure. what, what sure. kind of artistry <laughs> do you get yourself into? So I'm a mixed media artist. I work primarily with ink. Um, okay. I work in ink and thread. So I embroider paper. I cut paper. I layer it. I paint it. Um, and that's, that's primarily what I work in. I have dabbled with just about everything under the sun. Um, growing up, there's not an art medium that I haven't met that I don't like. Right. Um, and I actually went to school for violin. So, you know, I'm also a violinist and that's cool. that was a huge part of my life as well. So the creative has always been there. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to kind of clear it up because some sure. somebody might ask me, well, what, what does she do? And, uh, well, she said she's an artist, but <laughs> so many people say they're an artist. Now it's like a girl who just like, you know, took a couple pictures on Instagram and will say, I'm a model. And it's like, okay, so what, what, yeah. do, what do you really do? <laughs> so, so um, I'm all for people trying things and calling themselves that because that's how you get half the battle, frankly. Okay, <laughs> but, fair um, enough. Yeah. So I do, I do um, 2D art. Yep. Gotcha. And uh, so anyway, I, you know, with MS, there's, I don't know if it's been discussed on your show in the past, but a lot of people refer to the spoon theory. You either love it or you hate it. Um, people, have you had anyone describe what that is? No, I know what you're talking about, but please, yeah, please explain that. I have, yeah. yeah. So I'm going to butcher it. There's probably much more beautiful little memes and pictures people can pull up if they're interested. Right, right. But the spoon theory is the idea that you have a set amount of energy each day. And so in this, metaphor it's represented by a spoon so say everybody has 12 spoons when they wake up if you are a um you know person without living without any sort of issues to your energy or anything like that you have 12 spoons and if you do um live with a chronic illness you know the idea is that each action in your day takes a certain amount of these spoons away at a higher rate than somebody else. And so for some days, you know, in my past life, I'd say it, it would take four of my 12 to run an event at work. And some days when I'm in a multiple sclerosis flare, flare up, um, those four spoons would be a shower or, you know, I woke up with one spoon, can't do anything that day. Um, and so it's a constant like balance, take and balance of, okay, I did this big thing. I need to rest now or else I'm going to be in a deficit and be in trouble a little bit. You know, if I mm -hmm. stay up watching Netflix all night, I'm not going to have spoons the next day. <laughs> right. Um, in a big way, that might be a week. Um, and so with this job, this career path that I had, um, I really, took a look at, you know, what am I throwing my energy to? What do I, what do I actually want to spend my time doing? And that's a, it's a privileged thought because, you know, I also have kids and a mortgage and it's not that easy to throw caution to the wind and be like, I'm going to be an artist and, you know, still live in my house. 
um, it's scary as hell. <laughs> mm-hmm. But um, I really, I took this time um, at the end of 2018 when I left the job. Um, I had about four months just to myself to create projects. And I created what's now um, called the Colors of MS project during that time. Mm-hmm. Um, this is an art project where I take other people living with multiple sclerosis, their black and white MRI that diagnosed their MS, and I change it into abstract art oh, at the cool. same time. Um, it's something that I did for my own image, and I found it really moving and powerful, and it felt you know, like I could finally look at the image and stomach it and even like it, even celebrate it, want it on my wall, um, that kind of thing. And so I was, you know, very pleased that it, it was something that other people wanted to participate in. And um, it's a really abbreviated way, abbreviated way to kind of describe the project. But, you know, since starting in 2000, top of 2019 with that, um, as a okay, I'm just going to do this. I'm going to put it out here. Um, you know, I've painted 109, 89 um, MRI at this point and worked with people in about 29 U.S. states, about nine countries around the world um, and have just kind of met this community of kindred spirits, really. Um, did, you have and, any, did you have any knowledge of what MS was before you got your diagnosis? I didn't. No, I didn't. Not at all. I had no idea. Um, yeah, I, I, I think right out the gate and went out and bought a bunch of books on it. My parents gave me a bunch of books on it and was completely overwhelmed with um, information <laughs> right out the gate. Um, and I, I, to this day, I haven't read half of them. Um, some I have. I, I have a dear friend who I've painted, um, Jillian Kingsford Smith, who's written books from people living with MS's perspective. And I found stories like that and comforting, um, more so than the, the clinical books of what to do. And, you know, um, it can be really overwhelming. It's overwhelming at the beginning. And I think the largest barrier to that was trying to digest what MS meant was finding that right community. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure this goes for anything that someone's trying to find their community with. But um, I, I was pointed towards Facebook uh, by a physician of mine. And so I had joined a few groups and promptly like ran out of those groups with my hair on fire. <laughs> it was like, it was dark. It was dark. It was not what I needed to see in that moment. Um, By dark, I mean, you know, every single post is, you know, my toe hurts today. Is this MS? My hair hurts. Is this MS? Am I going to die? Pray for me. Like all this stuff. And I'm like, dear God, I don't want to hang out here. Um, This is not helpful to me at all. (laughs) Well, because then you start to, like, yeah, because then it starts to bring you down and start to make you think things. And and it's just not good for you psychologically. No, I'm not. I don't want to knock it entirely because we have all had those thoughts. (laughs) Of course. Um, We've we've all fought those demons on a day-to-day basis and I get it. It's just not how I can process um, something. I, you know, don't want to sound like a Pollyanna cheerleader or anything on the side, but I'm like, you can still do whatever you want. It just may not look what your original idea looked like, what your original idea was. And I've met too many people that are just killing it in their own way. Um, And I say that with a caveat because I really, really hate this kind of rise and grind culture we live in. Right, yeah. (laughs) Um, I hate it. It's it's not healthy. Um, And and I I try to be transparent with people that follow me that, like, uh, look, I'm not creating this, like, international art projects and this is what I do all day and I'm like so pumped and full of energy and successful and this is great like I have days where I cannot get out of bed I have days that you know the same days that everyone else has um 
And I'm not going to feel apologetic for those. Those are just part of it. You yeah, know? that's, that's one then, of the main reasons why I reached out because it, it, I saw a lot of your stuff, and it's like that. That's my thing. Like, I guess what some people would say is like, I'm not, I'm not safe in a way where it's like, I'm going to say how I really feel. I'm not going to talk about the glamour of be having a disability. It's like there's days that are just yeah. I don't want to get out of bed. There's days I think about killing myself. I don't go. I won't go through with it because yeah. there are a lot of things I have to live for, and I do have a lot of yeah. things I'm thankful for and I'm happy. But there are days where mentally it's crippling and, and sometimes physically I still have pains and stuff. And of course my eyes are just still, you know, fluctuating and it, it's disheartening mm-hmm. when it's, you know, you know, I'm, I'm 32 and I'm trying to live my life and trying to do things and yeah. my eyes always get in my way. And, but again, I'm also not going to just sit and do the, my toe hurts or whatever, because that's not good either. Because like I said, I, I do overcome and I do fight. And that's, like I said, it's, you mm-hmm. need to have, you can't just have one like you have to talk about every aspect of what it's like to go through what you go through and, and you know and there's there's funny moments absolutely there's dark absolutely moments and, and happy times and and you know what social media is not really conducive to that and oh, i just no. I, I try to remind that with people i'm like oh god you know that it took somebody possibly hours to decide what image they wanted to share with you in a curated way that is maybe not the reality. I mean, it, it's hard. So, I mean, I struggle with it that um, both my my art, my projects, my business, my community, all of these really wonderful things in my life live on an entity that is also one that is really hard for me to swallow. You know, I don't, um, I have to be really careful with what I, I take in from platforms like that because I get, very overwhelmed. Imposter syndrome is really easy to catch. <laughs> you know, right. all of those things are just not healthy. And so, you know what? I totally celebrate people knowing when they need to have that day in bed and whatever. And like, all of us need to have that kind of shitty day to get Absolutely. to the day where it's not going to be like that. So, um, yeah, just well, gotta, well, how, you know, how does, best uh, laid plan. <laughs> right. Um, how does like MS impact you the most, whether it's daily or just in your life? Like what is, what is, what is the hardest parts of having MS? Sure. Um, for me, it's the fatigue. Um, I, it's just, and it's the hardest one to commiserate with people on if they don't have a chronic illness. Right. Um, the fatigue is crushing. I could have you know, eight cups of coffee and I could still take a nap. I'm, I'm just always tired and it, it depends on, you know, what I've got going on. Um, big time it goes, you know, I can control it and I can't control it. Um, and so it's hard because I feel like fatigue is one of those things out there that people are like, well, here's these fixes, you know, eat more kale, drink more water, stick your feet on the ground, you know, like, do some mm-hmm. yoga and you'll be fine. And like, nah, helpful. Yes. Sometimes mm-hmm. maybe, but you know, it's, it's just, it's kind of a hard thing to wrangle with. Um, I also have optic neuritis where my vision goes, it can go double. It looks like I have confetti in my eyes a lot of times, which is um, a hell of a thing when you're an artist. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure, nice, I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's shitty any point right. <laughs> absolutely but i'm like oh, okay i guess we're just going to go even more abstract than i was <laughs> expecting to today <laughs> I mean, that's um that's a big one um do you have any problem and, with like walking because my grandfather basically put him in a wheelchair um yeah yeah i i do and it's it's usually tied to my you know if i have a flare-up or whatever i occasionally need to use a cane um and I think, um, you know, my my right leg, I have just a lot of weakness and um, something called foot drop where you just kind of drag your foot a little bit. Mm. Um, so I do, I do really battle that a lot. And I think that, I think adjusting to that reality was the hardest for my vanity and ego when I was learning to, you know, learning more about MS. I, I, you, it's hard to let go of the, okay, people are not thinking about you as much as you're thinking about you in this moment. Right. And my example is, you know, when I start, finally, I'm like, you know what, this is a dangerous for me to not 
use a cane when I feel like this. You know, I can kind of hold it in my hand. Maybe I don't need it all day. Maybe I don't need it tomorrow, but I need it right now. I need to have it handy. And for me and my little reality, that was like, oh, God, what are all the parents at elementary school pickup thinking when I show up with a cane today and I don't have one tomorrow and then I won't have one for a month and then I'll need one again um, because there's that feeling of, you know, when you're still fairly mobile, when you have a disability that people are like, you are faking it, you know, Um I think about all the stories I hear from people who have, you know, the handicap tags in their cars, but they're not in a wheelchair. Right. And it's like not terribly uncommon that people are like accosted by able-bodied people, like being like, how dare you take this spot? And you're like, no, it is a trek to get from here to the door. <laughs> like it is challenging to me. And why would you have to, you know, broadcast this to people that have no Right. It's, it's the reason um, to be in your business. People either downplay what you have or they treat you like a child or like you have special needs. Yeah. And that happens to all of us. And it's like, yeah, like with me, in my case, like, or people that I know that have vision problems, they'll say like, if you're not running into things or you have a cane or a dog, oh, you're not blind or you're Mm -hmm. not visually impaired. You're fine. It's Mm -hmm. like, I never said I was mentally handicapped. I never said I had any problems other than I have a vision problem. But just because I don't have a dog or a cane doesn't mean I don't have an eye problem. I just make it look better than maybe most or whatever. But I, I try yeah. hard and I, I function well. Like with you, it's like, yeah, like just because you don't need a cane all the time or, you know, and, and just forget the cane part. Like you have other things that, you know, really just hurt you and you have to deal mm-hmm. with them. But it's like sometimes you being a strong, you know, we have to be strong people and and mentally is one of them. And, and sometimes we don't want to show our pain in front of everybody. And so we, we try to push through it and sometimes we make it look decent. But then behind closed doors you know, you may be on the couch just saying ow a thousand times over. So, Yeah. I I mean, honestly, that's one of the biggest points of struggle for me is knowing when to kind of not, not raise the white flag, but maybe be more transparent with how I'm feeling because any, any given day I have pain and I, you know, I have, I, I, I have, self-deprecating humor I lack through things to kind of handle things and you know I'm I'm a mom of two young kids and I'm a little bit more go 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 than I care to be a lot of the time and so a lot of it is like a grin and bear situation for me Um, but then I really pay for it on the back end and so that's been the largest learning curve for me to be like I need help (laughs) <laughs> I, need, right. I need help managing this thing so I can go be in fetal, fetal position for a little bit or I can like just, you know. Uh, MS isn't something you can pass down, right? To your children? Mm, I don't think so, but I may be wrong. People might have to look at that. I think that, uh, yeah, I'm not well versed enough to say. I don't think it is, but I mean, I was just case. asking, you have it. I'm not going to speak for that yeah no one else in my family has it i do know that so yeah um but i will say that you know in terms of the energy in terms of the you know kind of finding those invisible bits like the great joy silver lining of all of this is it's taught my kids to be so empathetic and attentive from such a young age in just the most organic way that I wish we all could be, you know, they're just very like, you know what, we did a lot. So now we're going to rest. We're going to be quiet. We're going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to help you out. Um, I'm going to help see you through this. And they just understand that. Um, That's great. Which is a question I feel like I get a lot from parents with like, how do kids deal with it and things like that. So I think I make up for it. I may not be the mom that's chasing them across the field all day, but we have fun. <laughs> hey, that's all that matters. And then the older, the more, the older they get, the more they understand and they see what you do, what you do sacrifice and yeah. what you do for them, that it, it, it becomes more of a bond and, you know, at least yeah. you, you hope anyway. Um, what do you, yep. is there anything like, what do you think that your condition or any of your conditions, um, have changed you over the years, whether it's mentally, mainly mentally, obviously physically, we kind of know, but mentally, how do you feel like it's, you know, changed you whether for the good or for the bad? Yeah, I, I think that I wouldn't have gotten the message sooner to try and chase my own goals. Um, if I hadn't had my diagnosis 
And I, I really do believe that. Um, there was a lot of stuff that I enjoyed doing in the, you know, wee hours of, or the late hours of the evening after I had finished my real life stuff, you know, and I always knew that there was a disconnect there, but I don't, I don't know what else it would have taken to get me to make that shift. Um, and so, you know, if you live with a condition or you don't live with a condition, I, I, I say, listen to those small signs because one of my, ugh, if I had to put it this way, I mean, like people look for little hints. It's like, mm, maybe this isn't right. Hint. This isn't right. This isn't right. I don't listen until like a brick wall falls on my head, you know. Stubborn, and huh? so I'm trying. I'm trying to do that, and it taught me to do that. And and it's something that I don't take for granted. Um, I could do. Well, I could do obviously without a lot of it, but um, but it is something that has made me feel like I've grown more into um, what I want out of this life. Right. That's awesome. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously we could talk about a lot of what you're, what you do now. Um, mm-hmm. cause you really, you really do do a lot from what I was reading. Um, mm-hmm. wh- what made you want to start doing, I mean, obviously you do the artistry and all that, but what made you start really kind of advocating and, and, um, you know, kind of getting your message out there? What made you want to kind of get into yeah. that? Yeah. So, you know, not only do I do this art, but a big, portion of it is helping give space to other people to tell their stories, which is something that you do. And um, it's so deeply rewarding. Um, And the reason that I felt that that was really important alongside the art is, you know, to help mitigate that reaction that I had when I was first diagnosed, when I went head first into this really negative community. And I'm like, Oh my God. Um, if anything, what I think the colors of a mass project shows is that it is different person to person. It's different how it manifests. It's different how we choose to handle it. It's different how we choose to, to, you know, pursue whatever activities or, um, jobs or, you know, any facet of our lives, everybody does it different. Um, so there is no one template. Um, and that has been something that's helped me hugely as a, as a patient with multiple sclerosis. Um, I learn from the people that I work with and, you know, I, I like to think that I, I, you know, what I do hear back from people is that it really helps change how they view and face the disease that they live with as well. And I mean, that pulls me out of the bed most mornings. Um, right. If I know that I have somebody that's waiting to have something that's been really painful and scary for them to face changed into something that they're looking forward to, like a birthday morning, like there's no better work. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm so thrilled to do that. And, you know, I am here for that person a hundred percent, you know, and even without, you know, my skills and as, as an artist like that, that's the meat of my work that just like absolutely drives me every single day. Um, awesome. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's the people you meet along the way are just pretty freaking incredible. So yeah. what do you, what do you think it is about people with disabilities? A lot of us are the ones that want to help people, even though, you know, most cases we don't know how to help ourselves, but we're always the ones that need the help, but we're always the ones that are trying to help. I think it's because we have our lived experiences. Like we know what it's like to not be received in the way that we wanted. Um, And, you know, sometimes that can create a boundary issue, but other times it's just like, we know where that person is coming from. Um, You know, and if you can reach just one person in your day to be like, I I'm with you. (laughs) <laughs> I emphasize I've been there. I'm still there. Whatever, whatever they need to hear in that moment. Um, that's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah. Cause a lot of times when I, when I interview people, like I, I mean, there's times where I, I get emotional. Like I really like feel for these people and yes, they become my friends outside of it and all, but I just, people just, I just met, you know, like you and I, we, we've had, we've kind of messaged back and forth in here, but like 
we've only known each other maybe a couple days here and there, but really not. This mm-hmm. is the first time we've actually got to hear each other's voice and interact, really. And it's mm-hmm. like, you know, like, yeah, mm-hmm. I can feel for you and have love for you because I know what you go through in, 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 in to, mm-hmm. on some degree. And it's like, you yep. know, you immediately have empathy and you immediately just feel for that person and just like, you know, you're just happy that, you know, you exist and, and you just do such great work. So, um, thank but, you. Yeah. yeah. But it, yeah, it's just so nice yeah. that, like, you know, like I said, as I said earlier, we need to stick together because we are, you know, there's not many of us fighting. Even if there's, you know, 3,000 people fighting, um, it's, mm-hmm. it's not a lot. All right. So I, I unpaused it. Sorry, guys. I, had a call and I didn't want to cut off the interview. Um, <laughs> no worries. What I was going to say yeah. is that, you know, the ways that we show up for each other, you know, also comes with really respecting how other people are fighting and putting their energy out there. You know, I, I, I'm thrilled to be able to contribute art in my, um, in my quest to be a good advocate and a good, you know, patient leader, but there are, you know, the people that I've met along the way, helping others with mobility and movement throughout the day, advocating at their state legislature, um, all of these people, they just amaze me, the different ways that we all come out for each other. Yeah. Um, there's, there's still a lot of ways that I'm learning. I don't, you know, I haven't found my perfect doctor yet. I haven't found my perfect medication yet. I haven't found my perfect 10 top tips on managing, you know, my symptoms, I'm still learning from others about that. And so the people that are out there with their megaphone advocating in different ways, just, I mean, it's exciting. It's that, exciting to be a monk. But that makes you like real, like in a way, because you, you, you're not, you know, ignorant to the fact that you, you, there's a lot you need to learn about your condition. You're years in, but mm-hmm. you know, a lot of people want to feel like they need, they know everything. Like even with, with me like I you know a lot of people think like oh like you get on the podcast and it's like you must know everything about you know, in your case MS and it's like no like I want to learn too because I don't I know enough because of my grandfather but I a lot of yeah. these conditions I knew nothing about and it's like I'm going into it and I want to learn and because I care and I want you to get your story out so um but it's nice yeah. that you are you know like I said because you talked about off mic about not wanting to talk about medication too much because of you don't want to give people mm-hmm. the wrong idea of what they should take and, and wrong recommendations because it's like it, everyone's different and you have different doctors yeah. and so on and, and it makes perfect sense because people get their hopes up yeah you know and um you know and like you said with those groups where people are just like oh my toe hurts and then they may hear this and go like <laughs> oh that cream works oh shit okay and it's like no like that may yeah. not work for you and don't don't take it as I recommended that um, but it's also, I just you, really, go ahead, mm-hmm. go ahead, sweetie. Oh, nothing. I was going to say, I just would like to be a little bit more normalizing of taking things at people's pace, you know, right. it's like, just because you've received this thing and you're like, okay, now I'm supposed to become an expert on this condition. Like if you do not feel like reading a 400 page book <laughs> yes, <laughs> on yes. the clinical manifestations of what you're living with, don't, don't right. <laughs> go do something that brings you joy. Go right. find someone else that's living the same fight and dealing with it in a different light. Like there, there are resources in different kinds of ways. Um, you know, if you don't want to eat a specific way, you know, cold turkey from day one, don't do it. Just you know, get there eventually in the way that you want to. Um, and you know, I, I feel like I catch a little bit. Of trouble for that occasionally because there are things that people do that have been immensely successful for themselves but again everyone's different and I'm a big advocate of choosing what makes your heart comfortable in the day that you're living so right because like like you know with mental health people are so a lot of there's you know some people are so anti-medication but then there are some people medication mm-hmm. works um mm-hmm. and it's Absolutely. anything in life people, some people church helps some people hate church some people you mm-hmm. know some people you know, want to go to college. Some people hate college. Like it, it, things work for some people that, don't, and, you know, that's why we're all, that's what makes us different. Um, yep. And kind yep. of what you were saying earlier, like, I love the fact that like, you know, we're, we're like you and I are coming from two different parts. Uh, we're, mm-hmm. we're, we're tackling similar issues, but you're coming from, you know, an artist par- point of view and I'm coming from like a podcaster speaker type of ordeal. And there's so many people that mm-hmm. are kind of branching out and doing all these different things with disabilities and showing what we can do. And then at some point, hopefully we all kind of meet in the middle and then it's like, look, this is all us. Like, yes, you do kind of put us in this, you know, all oh, you guys are that logo, the guy in the wheelchair, but 
yep. look how different we all are. We're totally different. Even if we have the same exact condition as that person over there, we're totally different. And we can do so many yep. amazing things. It's just you didn't give us a chance to prove it to you. Um, and so, look, this is this is us in a nutshell. This is all, not in a nutshell, but this is all of us. This is what we bring to the table. Yeah. Um, and that's, that's what makes it so great is there's so many of us out here. It's just, it's hard to, you know, turn over these rocks to find them, but there's so many people coming from so many different ways of life to show like, yeah, like we're out here and, and you're not alone and we're, we're, we're doing this. A hundred percent. Yep. Wonderful. Yeah. Um, is there any, like, I like to like getting, you know, towards the end here, like I, I like to get people to, you know, the guests to kind of give people advice. Like there's people that are, you know, I guess we, we could tackle even whether it's from AMS or any disability, but what do you have any advice for people that are kind of in the beginning stages of, of whatever their diagnosis is? And, you know, obviously mental health comes into play and there's a lot of things that, you know, is there any, any advice you have for people who are kind of in the beginning stages of learning about what they have now and sure. they don't know how to deal with it? Yeah, I, I mean, I said it, um, I think I touched on it earlier, where, I mean, my biggest thing that I'd like other people to know is to, you need to find the community that's right for you. And that may be one person, that may be a group, that may be an in-person group, that may be a Zoom. I mean, whatever it is, if it doesn't feel right, you don't need to keep suffering through it. You need to just find a different way and that it takes a while I know it's easier said than done but you know I sat feeling discouraged for a good six months before I'm like why am I putting myself through this <laughs> why <laughs> um like I need to find the people with the dark humor I need to find the people who you know are going to say like I'm gonna enjoy this beer even though I'm gonna not be able to move later it's okay for today maybe not tomorrow but you know, just whatever you need to do to deal with your day. At and that, in that moment, right? Exactly. It's like there's no right way. There's no punishing yourself in the hi in hindsight for decisions made. It's just you have to do what you got to do. Um, and I think there's so much pressure to just like, like you mentioned earlier, become an expert overnight right. about what you're handling. Because a lot of what I fell into that I hope other people don't is that you know when you're served something large like a diagnosis um especially if you are kind of an empath or like people please or anything like that like I went immediately to work to assuring everyone around me that I was okay and I, I probably still spend a little too much time doing that of just trying to assure people like yes I have this but no 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 I'm fine um, and that was not healthy. It's not healthy <laughs> to mm. do that. You can ask for help in the way that makes you feel comfortable. And you can also just deal with it the way that you'd like to deal with it. And you don't have to, um, you know, take care of everyone around you first. So, right. yeah, no, you know, absolutely. When, and I'd like people to remember that, especially when they show up on social media, because it is fine if you go on like a three week hiatus. <laughs> it is fine. Right. You know. <laughs> no, I, I love. It have to be every day. I love what you said because, like, that is a very under, under talk. I don't even know how to put it. It's, it's something that no one really discusses. Of, you know, we all have it in our own ways, but these sacrifices that we kind of make for maybe some sort of enjoyment. There's times where, like, I know if I stare at the screen long enough, it's going to blur my vision up, and it may take a while to fluctuate. It might be the rest of my day. I'm mm -hmm. done. Um, or, or or whatever. Maybe I put some drops in, but it's going to affect my eyes the next day. And I just sacrificed a 24 hour period where I'm not going to have that great of a day. And I know that, but I'm going to enjoy myself mm -hmm. at this point in time because I want to, um, yep. even though I know tomorrow I'll probably be discouraged and I'll be frustrated and, and depressed about it. But it's like, it's those type of moments that I think a lot of people don't understand. Like sometimes we sacrifice certain things. We sacrifice certain parts of our health, even just to enjoy a day or, or an hour or a yeah. moment. Um, and I don't think I've even discussed it, but yeah, that, that I love that because, it, you know, it, it's something we, no matter what your condition is, it's something we've all done in some way, shape or form. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it doesn't, you know, I know it's easier said than done too, because I'm trying to get better on the back end of not beating myself up for decisions. It's just like, you know what, that brought me joy for the time being. And 
that was good. And now I'm going to learn how to be a little kinder to myself on the back end of things um, when I'm having to do more of a down day or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's more grace. People need to be kind to themselves. <laughs> It's hard, but yeah, you gotta. It is hard, yes. Oof, it's hard. I mean, <laughs> for me, it's always helped with kids because I always think I'm like, what I want my daughters saying, what I'm saying to myself, to themselves, and I feel like, oh my god, I would die if they said that to themselves. Right, <laughs> so I'm yeah. trying. Yeah, if you, to be your daughter just said that. like, really, I have so many of these, and I'm just, I'm gonna have a fourth one. Yeah. It's like Pokemon or whatever. Like it, 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 <laughs> it, it, it's cute for a minute, but then you go like, oh, that's so sad. Like. It I don't is. want her life to be like that. <laughs> but again, it's, it's, yeah, but it's, it's great because you have to be a role model for them. Obviously also, you know, being a woman on top of it. So the fact that mm -hmm. you want them to turn into some, some form of you with their own individuality, but you know, and then being a, you know, yeah. cause you gotta be a role model. I mean, you're being a role model for your condition, for the disabled community and so on, but you know, they're the biggest ones you need to be the role model for because they're the next generation or so on. And you got to pass down the morals that you have and so on. And, um, you yeah. know, and you see what social media and every, every kid at age nine has a cell phone and they're into all these things and everything, you know, it's so, especially with women nowadays, it's like you see TikTok and Instagram and it's just girls shaking their ass and they're going down these paths of just trying to make, they're just wanting attention. And they're not doing it for the right reasons. They're just doing it for attention or money or whatever. And it's like, you know, I'm sure it just as a parent. I'm going to say, though, if that girl just wants to shake her ass on Instagram, go, girl. I mean, whatever. <laughs> I mean, what somebody else wants to do with their time is totally, I, I'm I'm cool. That may not be my path, but, um, I'm you sure know, I get it. Your daughter I get that. it. I won't be able to work the app by the time that they get on there. So okay, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Our questionable decisions will just make us a little bit more interesting in the end. So, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've all done our, our dirt. Um, yeah. 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 Is there uh, anything else you want to talk about as far as MS or just anything? No. I really, I just appreciate your time and what you're doing. And it was such a pleasure to finally connect voice to voice. Yeah. Um, yeah, we'll do it again outside of a recording. But yeah, honestly, Wait. you're you're like I said, you're a fantastic person. I love what you do, and you're thank you're you well needed for not only your condition but the community as a whole. Because like I said, we need more role models and more people to show uh, what we can do. Because there's not enough of us. There's a lot of us that are capable of many things, but we don't believe it, and we we're looking Absolutely. for the answers and we can't find them because we're looking for in the wrong places and. You know, like someone like you, like you're a perfect example, but people don't are looking for that because sometimes people are trying to figure it out on their own and they're not using inspiration from people that are just like you. So, like, I like what you do mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, the painting and I don't, just reaching out because, you, you know, people out there feel like they are alone and they're the only ones. Maybe they don't feel like they're the only one with this condition, but they feel like they're the only ones going through what they're going through at that moment. And that's what kills yeah. them physically, mentally, whatever. Um, and that's what breaks a lot of these people down and we lost way too many people. I mean, you know, it, mm -hmm. even if it's just, uh, emotionally, they feel like they can't beat it and then their body gives up and it's like, we need yeah. people to know that they're, they're not alone and life sucks right now, but it can get better. Um, and like I said, yeah. you're, like I said, you're an extraordinary person. I, I, I'm very happy we met and like I said, we will definitely keep in touch and be friends and uh, support each Absolutely. other. Absolutely. I, I, sh I shouldn't say that. And then you go, you know, well, I'm not supporting you, but, um, <laughs> no, I'm here for it. Yeah. I no, want uh, you rise. <laughs> all right. Sounds good. Um, yeah, I will let you know when it comes out. Uh, I Thank probably you. will be, I, I, you know, I screw it. I'm gonna move it up. I'll, I'll make you episode 50. So about a month from now, mm -hmm. month from okay. tomorrow or yesterday. Sorry. So very cool. Um, very cool. Yeah. We'll stay in touch. Yes, it was please just do. an absolute pleasure connecting with you. Yeah, same here. And uh, send me a couple of your paintings. I'd like to see some of them. Yeah, for sure. All right, sweetie. Yeah. All right. You have a good day. Take care. Yep. You too. Bye. All right, guys. Another successful interview. Um, yeah, it's um, one of those just great guests. This is one I've been trying to get to. Um, I guess it's not fair. I kind of said I moved it. I'm moving it up ahead of some other interviews, but it's just, I, I wanted to kind of go over this because it means a lot to me because of my grandfather having it. Um, 
and uh, yeah, it's it's she was great, and like I said, she was the first person that comes up in Google of, of like top Instagrammers with MS, and I don't know how many people follows her and all that, but that wasn't the point. I just wanted good role models. Um, yes, it could help if she posts it and people like it and then like me. Yes, this would be great, but that is really, I swear, that's not my intention. Uh, um, I'm such a dick. Um, but no, she's, she's, like I said, she's so delightful. I'm so happy to now call her a friend and, um, yeah, it, it's like I said, guys, I want you all just to be well. I hope everyone is just living their life the best they can. Um, I'm trying my best. I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not always happy. I'm not always, you know, myself. I'm trying to get better. Um, that's all you can do. Just try to be the best person you can be. Don't, you know, try to get to as close to perfect as possible, knowing that you'll never come anywhere near to being perfect or perfection, excuse me, but try your best to get as close as possible. Um, knowing that you will never obtain it, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, I love you guys. I appreciate all the support. Um, we've been on a journey. We've reached episode 50, which is ridiculous. Two more. We're at a year already. Um, but yeah, guys, the support is just wonderful. And I, 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 you know, I, every so often get some messages and some comments and stuff that I just like, it's, it keeps me wanting to keep doing this and just wanting to continue to uncover all these great people. Um, yeah, guys. So thank you again. And, uh, we will see you on episode 51. See you guys. Boy.